why the hell won't this model just work? It's not calculating the price per share. It's not showing my net interest income. All these wavy line things are happening and this model just won't work. Has this guy messed up the model that he gave me or whatever got sent not working? Can't possibly be me. Well, actually it is you. You missed one really important thing and I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what that is and how to fix it so it never happens to you in the future. Now, if you're interested in listening, stick with me right now. Okay, so I busted out the Pro Cap Tail of 50 Folds, which is the most badass model you can get on the internet. Now, we can see here in a couple of sheets, there are these little arrow things going around, little boxes popping up, and basically things aren't calculating, right? So you can see this, you know, here, this other sheet. Okay, we've got this again. God damn it, what's going on here? Okay, now you may think there must be something crazy going on with Excel. It's not the case. Now, Excel generally, you, well, you'd want to have automatic calculations turned on. If you have manual calculations turned on, nothing happens, okay? So when you're doing automatic calculations, Excel will run millions of calculations a second, depending on your computer, and it will try to make things work. Now, sometimes things are linked to each other. So say A1 is linked to A2 and A2 is linked to A1, and that's like mind blown, okay? It's called iterations, like everything is linked together. Now, there's certain times that you want to do those and you can't get away with them. It's really bad modeling practice to include iterative calculations unless you actually really, really have to. Now, the most common time you'll see that, especially if say you're an investment banker or something, is when you've got a balance sheet, a profit loss, and a cash flow statement. And if you want to calculate interest on cash, that is dependent on quite a number of things. And so it needs an iteration to figure out what amount of cash you're going to have, the interest will happen on it, which also increases the cash. It's this whole iteration thing going on. Now, with my models, like say the pro cap table, they also do some pretty complicated things, especially when you're trying to automate things a lot to kind of reduce the amount of calculations that you need to kind of figure out. Fortunately, some of my models do need iterative calculations. Now, I get a couple of people a month reaching out to me and saying things don't work. And pretty much immediately, I know exactly the reason why that is. It's that they don't have iteration calculations turned on, okay? So this is actually really easy. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I'll show you the manual way. I'll show you the shortcut way. I'm doing this on a PC, not a Mac. And frankly, screw you. If you're using a Mac, you're not taking this seriously. Excel sucks on Mac. So the manual way is you're going to go to file and then you click options and then you're going to go to formulas. Now, again, if you're on a PC, all you can just do is press alt T O boom. It takes you to the setting place, right? Then you click on formulas here. Now the first ones you're going to see here are workbook calculations. Now we've got automatic, automatic except for data tables and manual. And then there's this little option here for recalculate workbook before saving. Let me take you through these. Generally, you want automatic turned on always. Now, if you're doing, if you're building like a huge model like I do, sometimes you'll turn it off because it can run some slow and every time you're making a little cell change, it'll take maybe a second or two to kind of update again. And that can kind of be a little bit annoying and that time can add up over time. Now, data tables, I don't really use them. You use them for sort of scenario analysis to see like what earnings per share or something happen depending on some other variables like interest rates or something. Uh, data tables are relatively data intensive or calculation intensive. So if you are using that kind of model, you might use this. So the general automatic stuff will happen. And then when you kind of want to look at your scenarios with data tables and this is beneficial and you press like F9 or something to just recalculate it again. That's only if you use a lot of data tables. Now, manual, I only ever do if, again, like I'm making a big model and I just don't want to deal with calculations because I'm just coding stuff up and I know my model is going to be big and it just saves a little bit of effort. The problem is it can be a little bit dangerous because you might forget that you've turned it off and you're wondering why things look that they do and like you may forget it, okay? And especially when you're tired, you're working a lot and you're dealing with a lot of numbers, ain't nobody got time for that. So generally, I always recommend you have automatic calculations turned on all the time, especially if you're using like all my awesome tools, which I provide to you. This recalc workbook for saving thing basically just does a calculation so that next time you open it up, everything will be as it should be. Again, it's kind of pointless. I just don't use manual, always the automatic. Now, this little bad boy here 
enable iterative calculations is the entire point of this video. If you turn it on, all those little weird squiggle line things will just basically disappear and your prices, your net interest incomes, etc., will suddenly magically start calculating again. Okay, so we bosh that in and you're good to go. Now, you don't need to change these maximum iterations or maximum change stuff. I've once or twice maybe done it, um, increasing it basically if you're doing some really complicated stuff, but it's very unlikely if you're watching this video that you'll ever need to know the variables you need to put into those things. The only thing you need to know is you push this box and press OK and look, magic. That one's gone, that one's gone, and that one's gone. Congratulations, you're now a master at Excel. Okay. Now, there are other couple of things you want to bear in mind. Depending on your model, sometimes your model can, in banking terms, blow up, which means everything ends up looking like a total, absolute shit show. And there'll be divs and refs, well, not refs, but divs and like error calculations basically everywhere. And you basically screwed the model. So I really hope that you're constantly saving a version of that model just in case this thing happens. Because sometimes it can be such a pain to actually figure out how to fix it. Now, if this happens to you, there are basically two things you can do to fix it, okay? One is, say, with your interest expense line item, if you're dealing with like a p and balance sheet, is you can copy the formulas across out to the right where there's no calculations anymore, but copy it, don't, um, Control X, cut it because it'll still be linked. And then put zeros in. And then the model will just cycle through. It won't have to deal with the iteration anymore and it'll magically fix itself. Um, sometimes you'll have to zero in and figure where the core area is where the calculations are going wrong. It can be a huge pain in the ass, but once you know where it is, then you can build the second option, which is a toggle switch. So it's happened to you a couple of times. You can actually just build a toggle, which will in the formulas, um, either have your formula or convert that to a zero, depending if you toggle that on and off. So what does that look like, you may be wondering. Well, if you're a big nerd like me, you might actually build a macro with a little button that you'll push for that. So you see I've got some basic code here for the range where I want it. I switch it to zero, run a calculation, switch it back to one, and it kind of fish finishes. So here I have, you can see if I zoom in a bit, Here's a merger model I built like a couple of years ago. You push the circuit breaker button and it does its thing. Boom. Um, now, I can't think of a model off the top of my head where I've built one with a super basic toggle, but what would basically happen is you might have, uh, say, a calculation which would be, I don't know, maybe one plus one, all right? And you have equals the sum of uh, these numbers. So that would equal two. Now. This is obviously not gonna cause an iterative calculation, but let's just pretend it would, okay? So we would have a toggle here, and it could be uh, one or zero, right? I'll just quickly format that so you can see where it's gonna happen in here. So um, you could uh, basically just say equals times by this, right? So one would make it work, and if you had zero, then it, would go to zero, right? So that's basically bypassing the whole thing. Um, you would normally have a more complicated function in there, um, but that's a really simple way that you could build a toggle into it. Uh, you could have multiple cells linked to that, you push it on, push it off. You could build out some like pretty form stuff, which I've got like, you know, drop down menus or like toggle switches here for 338 section elections, um, stock or asset purchases or something. Uh, and there's ways of doing it, but I'm not covering that in the video. It just to be something aware of for more advanced stuff, if you're constantly having to actually figure out and circuit break things, that's where you want to go to. But the main point of this video was just so you, that you understand the real basic stuff, which is if things are not calculating and you see these little arrow things going around and cells linked to each other, it's not working because the model has iterative calculations built in. Okay, guys, I hope that was really useful to you. Um, the model that I showed this originally from is the cap table. So if you're a startup or an investor or even a professional advisor or lawyer and you need a cap table, feel free to check it out and I'm sure it'd be really useful for you achieving your goals. All right, bye guys.